Return goods from a store to the HO and to other POS sites through transit via. Previously, the transit via site concept was only applicable for goods being sent from the HO to the POS stores. Transit via sites can now be tagged while returning the goods from a store to the HO, as well as by returning goods from one POS store to another. So, what is transit via? Well, it is nothing but transferring goods to a site via another site. The packet being returned is created for the destination site. Before it reaches the destination site, it is first received in the transit via site as a GRT in the transfer in against transfer out form. Once the GRTs are received, automatically delivery chalans are created for the destination site. So now you can create the transfer out using the delivery chalans for the destination site. To tag the transit via site, open the site details, select the replenishment source. Under replenishment source tab, select the site and then we select the site for the transit via. Remember to check the strictly follow transit route checkbox when you plan to return the goods through transit via. Well, now returning goods to sites has become more convenient. Return goods from the store according to a GRT price list tagged to it. Previously, when the goods were being returned from the store, goods were being returned according to the last received price in the HO. There was no provision to add a price list to the goods being returned. At times, it may happen that the item being received at the replenishment site has multiple price based on site and goods aging. In such instances, we tag the appropriate price list to the replenishment sites so that when the goods are being returned, an accurate price is calculated. A GRT price list can now be tagged to the site so that when the goods are being returned, it has the price according to the price list. Open the site details, select the replenishment source, under replenishment source tab, Select the site and scroll to the GRT basis option. Select the as per price list option and then choose the appropriate price list. Please note that only MRP and RSP price types are displayed in the list. New filter functionality. Previously, there was no concept of having default filters for the data grids in POS and in retail management. It becomes very convenient when you see the appropriate list of documents in front of you whenever you open up the display grid. Display grid is the area where the list of documents are displayed. The filters are a new feature which would make it easier for the user to see the relevant documents whenever he opens up the desired data grid. The new filters have the capability of running queries according to which the data grid would get populated. Now we can have default filters set so that when the document list appears, it always appears according to the filter. Open a data grid and you would see the filter tool right on the top. We add a filter by clicking the add button. Now we click the Build Criteria button to create a filter. Click the Query Helper. We select the columns and create the condition for the filter. Give the criteria a name and save it. Now let's apply the filter. Now whenever this data grid would open up, the list would flow according to the filter applied. Ad hoc sales returns made in HO will now be returned according to a price list. 
Previously, for ad hoc returns, the rate was only considered as per the return rate of the store. Now, the items that are received on ad hoc basis in sales return will have the rate derived according to a price list. The new POS Auto Update tool. The POS Auto Update utility has been revamped to ensure a faster update process at the stores. We have a new user interface with amazing functionality. To know more about the new auto update tool, check out the upcoming new auto update video. New reports added to the auto email tool. Improve your productivity by sending auto emails for purchase orders, purchase order pending, purchase order cancel and daily sales report. Now, configure the auto email all by yourself with the new auto email configuration user interface, the SMTP mailer. Get to know more about the auto email in our upcoming tutorial about the SMTP mailer. Access the software window while working in the analytics window. Previously, the user wasn't able to access the software window while the analytic reports were open in POS or in retail management. Now the users can access both the windows at the same time. Sorting of purchase orders in the purchase order status has changed. The purchase order status was previously sorted according to the order number only. Now the report is first sorted according to the date followed by the order number in an ascending order. Backup data will now be validated before being restored in POS. In the previous versions, the restore process would get prolonged due to the errors being generated. Well, now we have a very stable restore tool which would first validate your data and then proceed with the restore process. We have an upcoming tutorial on validating the backup data. Negative quantities in an Excel sheet can now be imported in the open stock form. It was not possible to accept negative quantities from the imported Excel sheets for the opening stocks. Now, negative values can be imported in the opening stocks from an Excel sheet. Start counting on the fly while adding a new count. Once the cycle count is added, now you can start counting at the same time. Click the add button to add the count. Once we put in the details, click save. A dialog box appears asking if you would like to start counting right away. General ledger and sub ledger Four charges are now enabled for modification in the service invoice. So now you can modify the general ledger and the sub ledger with charges in the service invoice. Terms can be edited in sales return against invoice. Previously, only the terms in ad hoc sales return were editable. Now, the users will be able to edit terms for sales return against invoice as well. Agent and class filters are added in the finance register report. Payment register, receipt register, debit note register, credit note register have new filters added. Agent and class. Document numbers list of values sorting has changed. Before the sorting was done according to the document numbers. The document number will now get sorted according to the date. The documents that are affected are goods received chalan, GRC against order, GRT ad hoc, GRT against GRC, purchase invoice, purchase return debit note. The packet doc number field is added in goods received details analytic report. Previously, we only had the packet barcode numbers available in the report. 
Now a new field has been added which will show the packet's document number. The purchase service orders invoice date would get auto populated according to the valid from date. Previously, the service invoices for the sites were generated only after the valid to date. But now, service invoices can be generated from the valid date onwards. In the site schedule tab of the service detail, the invoice date will now flow from valid from date instead of valid to date. So that was all about the new features and enhancements. Along with the enhancements, there has been many bug fixes too. Update Genesis to get the best out of Genesis.